morning, everybody. Let us come on with praises this morning. Let's begin to worship Jehovah this morning. Can I ask you to unmute and give him praise? Let's give him praise this morning. Thank you, oh God. 
Praise. Amen. Thank you for praising God. We're going to do it one more time. And this morning, I just want us to praise God with understanding. So I'm going to read from Psalm 47. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It says, for the Lord most high is awesome. I'm reading from verse 2, Psalm 47, verse 2. He's a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. Then verse 5 says, God, your God, my God, the God who gave us these children has gone up with a shout, the Lord with a sound of a trumpet. It says, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our God. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together. The God of the God, the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. We are raising up children in an evil generation, but that doesn't make our God powerless. So we will not be afraid. It really doesn't matter what the enemy throws out. We know the God that we serve. We know whom we have believed and our confidence is in God Almighty. Which God in particular am I talking about? The God who created the heavens and the earth. The God who sits upon the circle of the earth and all inhabitants are like, like, like grasshoppers. The God who does not sleep, who does not slumber. The one who has always been there, the great I am that I am. The God who does not change. The God who does not lose any battle. The, 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 the God of the deathless path, the, the ancient of days. That is the God I'm talking about. So when we look at what is going on in the world, you know, at a point, uh, my heart started, wanted to panic a little bit. And then I said, mm -mm 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 -mm, go get yourself in order. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And you know, this morning, I want you to be confident that God is interested in your children. And the Bible tells me, and I'm sure that most of us know it, that God is able to keep whatever we commit into his hands. 
our God never fails. So I'm going to tell you to focus on God. And you know, I was meditating this morning as I was thinking about this meeting. And I said, God, praise is on my heart this morning. And I thought the Lord was saying, yes, two sets of people that must praise, praise me this morning. Those who feel that they're in trouble and there's no way out. Those who feel that this is hopeless, there's no way out. Those are the first set of people that will praise the Lord. And then those who feel that, wow, this is good. Ah, God is on my side. You know, so two extremes. You feel that there's no way out. You think that, wow, the, the enemy has blocked in my children. Mm -hmm. We are going to praise God. What we know is that ancient doors will be lifted up. What we know is that wicked doors will be broken. What I know in my spirit is that God himself, Jehovah Almighty, the God Almighty is still, break, is still breaking down prison walls. It's still crushing prison gates. So it really doesn't matter how bad it looks this morning, I want you to praise him. And then what if you are just in between? That's not a good place to be because the way the world is now, it's either you're shining or the enemy is trying to put darkness on you. So if you're just average, yes, you're not in trouble, but you're not winning. You're not, yeah, things are not bad, but they're not so good. Remember the Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail. Remember that the Bible says the children of the righteous shall be great on the earth. That's what the Bible tells us. Remember that the Bible says we are to become slaves of righteousness. So the children are not really sinning, but they're not serving the Lord. And that's what the Bible calls the waterless pit. And the Bible says by the blood of his covenant, he will bring the prisoners out of the waterless pit. So in my opinion, even if you feel that life is just average, is the reason for you to be like, no, 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 no. I'm not winning the way I should because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for me. So I'm going to praise God. So this morning, I want us to praise him. And you know, before we praise him this morning, I want us to declare certain things. As you're praising him, rather, I want you to declare certain things. So I'm going to take us to Psalm 124 quickly. Psalm 124. Thank you, my father. Psalm 124 says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, let Bemisola now say, let creative words parents now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, we must understand that men have risen up against this generation and not only men, evil spirits. Do you understand? There are so many evil agendas out there, you know? These things are being orchestrated by demonic spirits. You know, these are, these, these are sp the, the spirits that have been released from the pits of hell to come and do havoc, to come and wreak havoc on this generation. And we're standing, we're saying, no way, that children will not be lost. Generations to come, if the Lord tarries, will serve the Lord. You know, this creative word is actually to set in gener uh, generational blessings. That's why we're here. So it says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. That's what Satan wants to do. People are watching their children go, going down the wrong path. And the world is saying, there's nothing you can do. You have to leave them alone. Who, who, who told them that? We will not leave them alone. We won't only fight on our knees. We will speak out. We are no longer keeping quiet. What is wrong is wrong. We will not join this generation to call good, bad, and bad, good. No, 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 no. We're speaking out with authority, dominion, and power. And our words are not just mere words. They are spirit and they are life. They go in and they bring deliverance. They go in and they bring illumination. They go in and they rewrite destinies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he says, they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us the stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey, as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. We have escaped. Our children have escaped. And you know, it really doesn't matter what is looking like right now. The Bible tells me that the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And the Bible says, have faith in God. And if you stay to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. 
and you believe in your heart what you have said and you won't doubt your heart, you love whatever you say. So it says, our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fathers. The snare is broken. We have escaped. Our help, hallelujah, <laughs> our help, our help, the help of our children, the sanity of our children, the sanctity of our children, the safety of our children is in the name of the Lord, the God who made heaven and earth, that God in particular. Then please stay with me. Come to Psalm 125. It says, those who trust in the Lord, hallelujah, uh, like Mount Zion. So as you praise him this morning, I want you to put your name and say, I praise it. I, I trust in the Lord. This morning, I just come to say, Baby Salah, Baby Salah, trust in the Lord. I'm saying, God, you know it. I trust in you. My trust is in you. My joy is in you. My strength is in you. And my children are hidden in you. Their spouses are hidden in you. Their children yet unborn, hidden in you. Their generations to come, hidden in Je Jehovah. It says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Then it goes on, it says, for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to jump to verse four because we know that we're not going to put our own hands in iniquity. I'm just, I just want us to focus on the fact that the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and those who are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. No longer are we going to sit around and say bad things happen to good people. No, God will do good to those who are good. And we all know that the, the blood of Jesus Christ qualifies us. Thank God we don't come in by our own righteousness because nobody will be able to stand. But we come in by the, the shed blood of the Lamb. We come in by the pure blood of the Lamb. So this morning, I want you to unmute yourself and begin to shout His praise giving praise from the depths of your heart. You know, just load yourself, load your atmosphere with praise, saturate where you are with praise. Lord, I praise you this morning. Oh, Lord, I Oh, 
Bless you, our God. We worship you, mighty God. We stand before your God and we say you're worthy to be. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Thank you so much for praising the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 127, verse 3. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. It says, um, the message says, Don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb is his generous legacy. So this morning, I want us to thank him because we know that the gifts that God has given to us cannot be called the enemy. And no child has been given by Satan. And the gods that did not create them cannot inhabit them. It's just not allowed. I want you to open your own mouth and say, Lord, as a gift from your God, I give them back to you as the gift, Jehovah. I hand them over to you. You can use them. Remember, Hannah had been barren for so long. And when the Lord gave us Samuel, she took Samuel back to the temple. She said, Lord, you can have him. And we know the story of Samuel. At the end of his life, it was recorded that nothing that he said fell to the ground. He served the Lord in spirit and in truth. I've caught a revelation that it is possible for all the children of the righteous people to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. So I want you to hand over your children with thanksgiving this morning and say, Lord, you can use these ones. You can have them. Lord God Almighty, you can possess them. If there's demonic possession, that means that there's divine possession as well. That means the Holy Ghost can possess them. The power of God can, can, can overshadow them. The Holy Ghost can brood over them. I want you to open your mouth and rededicate your children to God. Say, God, I am the father, I am the mother. I've come to give you my children. Don't let the gods of this world have them. Don't let the gods of the pits of hell have them. Don't let the wickedness of Satan over, oh, 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 overshadow my children. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word, oh God. Father, I bring my children back to you this morning. You can have them, oh God. You can use them for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. God. And Lord, we Father, 
mighty name we have prayed we're still gonna pray you're gonna pray for yourself as a parent and say lord god help me do not let the deceitfulness of riches take me away take me away from parenting my children properly and if you're already feeling like oh no that has happened the lord is the god of restoration the message of the cross is not unto condemnation is on is unto restoration so we're going to pray against the deceitfulness of riches, number one. We're going to pray against carelessness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray against spiritual slumber. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy planted this. The enemy planted evil, evil, evil seeds, you know, while men slept. So we're awake now. We understand what is going on in the world. So we're going to come against the deceitfulness of riches. Let me tell you, there's no amount of riches that can buy the souls of our children. We're going to come against that. Huh? We're going to say no to those things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to confront those things this morning. We're going to come against ritual slumber in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to come against every form of carelessness. Do you understand? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And then we're going to pull down the God that we've exalted in the lives of our children. And that is academics. I'm not saying it's not good for them to go to great schools. I promise you, God has been gracious to my children. They, 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 they've gone to wonderful, wonderful schools. But God first in their lives. It doesn't matter the qualifications. It doesn't matter the name of the school. It doesn't matter which league or out of league or whatever. It doesn't matter how expensive or where it is in, 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 in on the earth. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. God first, that's what I'm saying. So that's, that's one thing we've exalted, academics. We can send children anywhere so that they can get a good degree, so that they can go to a choice school. You know, we don't even ask God, should this one go away from home? Should this one stay? Should we continue to fire this one up by just sending them all over? And the Lord will have mercy on all of us because we're all guilty. But this morning, I want us to cry and say, Lord God Almighty, my children will not be stolen. The deceitfulness of riches, carelessness, slumber, and the God of academics, you know, Everybody wants to go abroad. We're all going to different places. And I'm not saying I'm not guilty. You know, we're all guilty. We're just saying, Lord, God first. Let your name be exalted in their lives. Open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Lord, I exalt you today as the God of my children. In the mighty name of Jesus, have mercy. We have been jealous. Take away the deceitfulness of riches. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. You are going to read it and say, my children are ordered by the Lord. We will not make decisions for our children because that's what everybody is doing. We will not make decisions for our children because we need to go after money. You know, I'm too busy right now. They just need to find their way. No, 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 no. Money will finish. <laughs> our money cannot buy the souls of our children. We will not make decisions for them concerning our children based on wrong things. I want you to cry out and say, Lord God Almighty, Order the steps of my children, oh God, and help me to hear you when you are speaking. speaking. Help me to help understand me. what you want them to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, Lord, your word says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord oh, and he delights in his way. Order the steps of my children in everything. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, lead them, oh God, guide them, oh God. Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Please come with me to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, verse 26. Isaiah 40, verse 26. It says, lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number? He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ, not one of our children will be missing from the assembly of the saints in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter how far gone they are, 
It doesn't matter how much Satan thinks is holding them down. We're calling them back into the light of God. And we say when God is calling the names of his saints, not one of our own children will be missing in Jesus' name. I want you to open your mouth and declare it. That Lord God, when you call the saints, oh God, by the greatness of your power and the strength of your power, not one of our children will be missing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They will not be called among the children of the church in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, when you call the names of your saints, not one of them will be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name we have prayed. Thank you so much for praying. Please come with me to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41 verse 10. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I want you to declare this over your children that they will not be afraid. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, they will fear, not, as the Bible says it, because God is with them. They will not be dismayed because God is their God and God will strengthen them. God will help them. God will uphold them with his righteous right hand in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, I speak this word over our children this morning. I say, Lord, fear, oh God Almighty. Fear will not take any root in their lives, oh God. This morning, we bind the spirit of fear. We declare over our children that you have not given them the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. They have self-control in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, they will not fear because you are with them in the There's mighty no name of Jesus Christ. Our children will not be displayed, but God will strengthen every single child that is connected to us. God will be in the mighty name of Jesus. He will uphold our people and by your right. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. and <laughs> in jesus name we have prayed thank you so much for praying i want us to pray the same scripture from the message bible so it says i'm with you there's no need to fear for i am your god i will give you strength and help you and hold you steady and keep a firm grip on you. I want us to declare that God 
hold our children steady, O oh God. Lord God Almighty, sustain them, Jehovah. Keep a firm grip on them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, this is your word, oh God. We are asking, oh God, to hold mm -hmm. our children. Lord, keep a firm grip on them. Lord God Almighty, keep a firm grip on God. On the ones you have given me, oh God. Lord, give me a firm grip on God. Give me a firm grip on God. Our children, oh God, will not be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I declare that you will not be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I declare that you will not be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I declare that you will not be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I declare that you will not be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I declare that you will not be exposed the Objection. <laughs> Lord <laughs> <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you so much for praying. Please let's go to Hosea, the book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 2. Amen. It says, Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. This morning, I want you to say, Lord, we've come with words, and we're asking you to take away all iniquity from our children. All iniquity. It doesn't matter how small or how big, you know. I personally believe that Satan has released demonic forces against this generation. I believe that angels of darkness, you know, I don't know if one should even call them angels, you know, but they've come with darkness and they're ready to take over the children. They've come with evil. They've come, you know, and the intention is to corrupt the children. The intention is to make sure that they don't fulfill their destiny. The intention is to make sure that they are taken away from the Lord. So now we're saying, Lord, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, Take away all iniquity from our children. Take away all iniquity. Open your mouth and say, whether it's obvious or not, whether it's hidden, whether we even think that it's okay, because we've also lost our sensitivity. So everything, I heard something that broke my heart yesterday. Somebody said, if you want to know what's going on in the world, just look into the church. And I thought, no way. God forbid to say, if you want to know the current fashion of the world, just look into the church because the church is trying to outdo the world. And ah, that's not our portion. So I want you to cry out and say, Lord, concerning my children, oh God, let them be saturated with the spirit of righteousness and holiness. Make my children slaves of righteousness. 
take away all iniquity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray. Father Lord, by the power and the name of Jesus Christ, we have brought words this morning. my children take away all iniquity, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. we have prayed amen um one of the things i believe the lord is laying to my heart is that um, everyone comes into this world to fulfill something. So everyone must carry a holy burden, a divine burden for the Lord. You know, there must be something that you're carrying in your heart that burdens your heart and that's from the kingdom of God. Now, when we don't understand or we don't break into the, the, the revelation of those burdens, we carry the worldly burdens. You know, there are so many burdens out there. People are, are, are concerned about what they're going to put on, what they're going to eat, oh, which school are we going to go? You know, we go, we go and we carry all these burdens and then we put them on our children. So they also carry these burdens from us and it goes on like that. You know, it's all about how well you're doing, how well you do, how well you dress up, but people don't even know you. People really don't care what you wear or not. You know, when we're going out, we don't want everybody to see, oh, yes, I'm so well-dressed. I'm even carrying a designer bag. And I'm not saying those things are not, yeah, the, God gives us all things to enjoy, you know. Um, but what God sent us here for a purpose. Esther was sent here for a purpose. And when the time came, she, she, the, the, the burden located her and she received the burden. David was sent here for a purpose. He needed to be here so that he would kill Goliath. You know, and if you look through the Bible, Jesus came here for a purpose and he carried the burden. And when the burden came, he did not reject it. And I feel that there's this holy burden that we must carry as individuals and our children must carry them. So please come with me to Matthew 11, 28 to 30. It says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, we're looking for rest for our children. And we're looking for rest for them in the way the world has told us, yes, this is how rest comes. If they can go to a good school, get a good job and all that. And it goes on like that. But the Bible says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest. You know, this true rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we're going to pray. Before we pray, I just want to take that verse three from the Amplified Classic Edition of the Bible. It says, for my yoke is wholesome. We're asking the Lord to give each child this wholesome burden, this wholesome yoke. It says, my yoke is wholesome. It is useful. It is good, not harsh. Hard, it is not it is not harsh, it is not hard, um, it is not pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. I just want us to cry and say, Lord, 
because life does not permit a vacuum. And that's something that Satan is preying on. He is capitalizing on the fact that even when they come to Christ, they're not carrying any burden for the kingdom. Most children don't even understand who they are. And we rejoice that they're even coming to church. Many of us don't understand that they need to serve the Lord. They need to carry a burden for the Lord. They need to be useful in the hand of the Lord. Their hearts must be yielded to God and their hands must be released to God. Their feet must run towards the things of God, you know? So we're going to ask the Lord for divine burdens for our children to say, Lord, let their lives not be empty. If their hearts are filled with Jesus, their hands will not be empty in Jesus' name. And their, their feet will not be lazy in Jesus' name. Their feet will find somewhere to go and they will go towards the things of the kingdom because feet are meant to carry you somewhere. So if they're not carrying you towards God, they're carrying you away from God. So I want you to pray for your own children and say, Lord, huh, let them understand the coming to you. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Give them rest and let them not just stop there. Let them take your yoke upon them. Let them learn from you. They said they looked at Peter and I think it was Peter and John and they realized that they were educated on, on, on learned men, but they had been with Jesus Christ that they had been with Jesus. That's the portion of our children. So I'm going to ask you to unmute and say, Lord God Almighty, let my children's lives don't be empty. Let them be carrying a burden for the kingdom. Jehovah, we come body. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, fail God. Good burden to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, I pray. Jehovah, you show them I <laughs> Father, so much 
name we have prayed so the bible says we are for signs and wonders in the mighty name of jesus christ so now i want you to come with me to mark 16 the book of mark 16 and i'm going to read from 17 and we're going to pray this over our children he says and these signs we follow those who believe because our children are going to be doing divine projects for the lord they're going to carry the burdens of heaven divine burdens that's what they will carry in the mighty name of jesus christ you know and they will walk in the unforced rhythm of grace that's what the, that's how the message bible puts it and then these signs will follow them it says and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover now some people say, but my children don't believe it's okay. You are going to pray and say, Lord God Almighty, because my children will believe. Mm. Huh? And for those of us who have children who are already believers, we're saying because they believe, oh God Almighty, in your name, they will not romance demons. No, no, no. They will not be found in the assembly of the, of the evil ones. No, no way. They will not sit with scoffers in Jesus' name. They will not enjoy deadly things. No. But if they touch those things, they will not be poisoned in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will use them as his battle axes in Jesus' name. They will carry the spirit of God everywhere they go. Demons will run away from them. They will call the shots in this world in Jesus' name. They will walk around with dominion, in authority and power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now let us pray for them. Father, Lord, these are the signs that must follow our children. No depravity, no mental illness, no insanity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
we have prayed oh we have only one minute left okay uh okay come quickly please to job five in the mighty name of jesus you can go and finish it at home i'll just do verses quickly job five um and um, from 19 to 20 it says he shall deliver you in six troubles yes in seven no evil shall touch you in famine he shall redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword we're at war the enemy is at war against the children of God. So I want you to declare those two verses, but later, please take it down to 27. Father, Lord, we bring our children this morning, oh God, and we declare your word over them, that Lord, as they go on, as they go about doing signs, I will oh, oh God. God. So you my father, you will oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, they will destroy you, oh God. In famine, oh God, you shall redeem the things, the the things of hell, Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, we will bless the ocean, oh God, Gener for generations to come, many blessings. Mighty name, we have prayed. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I'm going to ask you to unmute for a minute and just bless him as we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. God bless you.